Ramadan is the month of blessings and forgiveness. Ramadan is the month of blessings and forgiveness. Ramadan. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Please repeat after me الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله How amazing would it be if you could see the policies of Jannah before you die Usually you see these things if it's a good soul after you've passed away. That's the normal rule. But let me give you a special vazifa, something that you can recite, and you will be able to see the palaces of Jannah while you're still alive on this earth. Amazing. Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, that the one who recites through the park upon me 1,000 times a day will not die until he sees his place in Jannah. Subhanallah, how magnificent is that? You know, you can see the beautiful gardens of Jannah just because of reciting through the Pakh of Nabi Akrim Sallallahu How long does it take? A thousand times? Maybe, maybe 10 minutes. But those 10 minutes will transform your life. Not only will you get this amazing reward of seeing Jannah before you die and your abode in Jannah, but also you will have all the blessings and barakat and mercies of reciting through the park of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Try and spend as much time as you can reciting through the park and watch all your worries disappear. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One day on Eid, some people came to the house of Hazrat Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They came to meet him and greet him, but the doors were closed. And they could hear a sound. And it was a sound of somebody crying. When they paid attention, they heard a sound emanating from the blessed house. When they opened the door, they asked surprisingly, O oh, Amir al-Mu'minin, today is the day of Eid. Everybody is delighted. Yet you are in your home with the door closed and you're crying in the court of Allah. Why is this? Wiping away his tears. This amazing personality. And let me remind you, this is the great Hazrat Sayyidina Umar Farooq who conquered 2.25 million square miles. The kings of Persia used to tremble at his very name. He said, O oh people, this is the day of Eid, of celebration, but it is also the day of Eid, warning as well. Indeed, this is Eid for the one whose salah, whose fasts have been accepted in the court of Allah. But it is also the day of warning. For those whose salah and fast have been rejected and thrown back in their face. I am crying because I do not know whether my worship has been accepted or rejected. Allahu Akbar. May Allah Azza wa Jal, for their sake, accept our worship in Ramzan al-Mubarak. The thing to think about is this. We have worked day and night in this month of Ramzan al-Mubarak. We've tried to please Allah Azza wa Jal. We try to keep away from sins. But at the same time, what you have to remember is this, that we have made many mistakes. We've been extravagant. We've gone beyond the boundaries of what Sharia taught us. But when it came to spending, we didn't look back. The glorious Quran, Surah Bani Israel, verse 26 and 27 said, and spend not extravagantly. No doubt the spendthrifts are the brothers of the devils, and the devil is ungrateful to his rub. What did we do? We spent hundreds and thousands of pounds on clothes and other things for Eid. And yet when it comes to spending in the way of Allah, we hold back. And when it comes to wasting money, we don't think twice. The scholars write that man has been created in a very unique way. We're not like animals. We don't just go off our desires if something comes into your mind, you don't just implement it straight away. No, you try to differentiate between right and wrong. What is going to please Allah Azza wa What is obedience of Allah Azza wa What is going to please the beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What is the adherence to his beautiful Sunnah? And what 
is the way of the shaitan, the devil. He whispers into our ears, but we never think about this. We never distinguish between the two. This distinction is what Ramzan teaches us. Ramzan draws a fine line down the middle and says, this is what is allowed, this is what you should be doing, and this is what you shouldn't. And in Ramzan and Mubarak, every one of us, me, you, all of us, we respect that line. We say, yes, in Ramzan, this is this side, this is the good, this is the pleasure of Allah, this is the obedience of Allah, we need to do that. And that is the way of the shaitan, we need to avoid it. But as soon as Ramzan's over and Eid comes, suddenly this line becomes blurred. Why? It becomes blurred because now our desires are coming out. The shaitan is whispering in our ears. Our nafs, our, you know, our ego is coming out. And you want to go back to it. So he says, go on then. Indulge in a little bit of this. Doesn't matter if it's the disobedience of Allah. You have been obedient to Allah all of the month of Ramadan. So you need to balance it. That is a trick of the shaitan. You don't need to balance anything. You are perfectly balanced when you're in the obedience of Allah. It's the shaitan who is trying to deceive you. What he's trying to teach you is to behave like an animal. You know what an animal does? When an animal has a desire, it can't stop itself. It will just eat all day. It will just sleep all day. It will do whatever comes into its mind. But as human beings and the best of the creation of Allah, we have been given intellect. We've got thought. Ramzan and Mubarak came us and put us in touch with our inner thoughts. He said, you're not just an animal. No, your status is much higher. You need to spend your life in the obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we said, Labbaik, yes we do. And each one of us strived hard. Now that striving doesn't come to an end on either day. That striving continues till the last moments of your life on this earth. That's what Ramzan and Mubarak taught us. Life isn't aimless. It's not just about eating, drinking, and living a merry life. It doesn't work like that. Allah Azza wa says in Surah Mulkshi, verse 2, glorious Quran, He, Allah Azza wa who has created death and life that He may test you as to whose work is excellent amongst you. Life was a test. Life was all about you giving up your desires and pleasing Allah Azza wa You were given this free will. You could do whatever you want, but then you yourself saying that I've got all these attractions, and I'm especially speaking to my youngsters here. You know, you've got all these people you can text. There are people, you could all this social media and all the filth out there. You could do all of that. But purely for the love of Allah Azza wa Jal, you give all that up. Give it all up. And you say that through the fear of my creator, through the love of his beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'm going to give all this up. You know that person? Let me share with you an amazing Hadith of Mubarakah. You know, every time... I, I think about this hadith of Mubarakah, or I read it, it almost brings tears to my eyes. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I am the Habib of Allah Azza wa I am the beloved of Allah Azza wa And that young person, who has everything in front of him, but for the love of Allah Azza wa gives up everything and turns to Allah Azza wa he is also the Habib of Allah Azza wa He is also the beloved of Allah. Now you've got an opportunity you know, in Ramzan and Mubarak, we built up all this piety, taqwa. We've all built up all this strength to fight sins. Now the shaitan is saying, let's go back. Now think, right now, because of the blessings of Ramadan, I am the beloved of Allah Zawajal. Why? Because I've spent Ramzan obeying Allah Zawajal. And the beloved Habib said, you know, I've given up everything. I gave up my social media accounts. I didn't go to Facebook. I didn't go to YouTube. I didn't do any of this. I stayed away from everything. Why? Because I wanted to see no evil. I wanted to hear nothing that was wrong. The same applies outside Ramadan. We're still trying to please Allah Azza wa Jal. Life is a test. What you need to do now is take that training of Ramadan and apply it to every moment of your life. And I know it's not easy. What the scholars say is this. If you want to continue in this strength. You know one of the reasons that Ramadan is easier for us? because everybody's doing it. The entire house, when you go to the masjid, all the namazi, everybody is working hard to please Allah So it becomes easy for us because, because of the environment we're in. We're in a beautiful Madani environment. You know, wherever you go, 
everybody is in the euphoria of Ramadan. So it gives you strength as well. You go to the masajid, everybody's reading Tarabi, everybody's reading the Quran. You get the jazbah as well, you get the passion to do that as well. But outside Ramadan, it's a bit different. But what if, what if you actually could build a Madani environment around you that was similar to Ramadan? You know, the same sort of things were happening. You continue to get the strength. Let me give you a, something very special. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, in the Madani environment of Dawat Islami, there is a full package. Now, it's just not one thing that you can concentrate on. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, it's a full package. That package is Madni Channel 24 hours a day in your home. You play that, you will have the sounds, the beautiful sounds of Salu al Habib and the Zikr of Allah Azawajal resonating in your home. You get up in the morning, you read the Quran. You then watch the Madni Mazakras of Amir al-Sunnah, Dan al-Barakatum al once a week. Then you travel on the Madni Kafras of Dawat Islami. Then every Thursday you go to the Istamaz of Dawat Islami. These will all make sure that you're around the people who are always trying to be obedient in the court of Allah Azawajal. And it will give you the passion as well. You know, if you want to change, the scholars say that one of the greatest and most practical way and efficient way and the best way is to change your environment. Come into the Madni environment of Dawat Islami. You will see the change. You know, if your teenage sons are growing up and you're worried about them, you think, you know, they're not obedient to me. I can't teach them things. Bring them to the Madni Kaflas of Dawat Islami. Travel in the way of Allah Azawajal. Don't just send them, come with them. Build a bond with them in the masjid, in the house of Allah Azawajal. You will find it amazing. You know, in a lot of the Western countries, a lot of parents complain. They come to us and say, my, my child won't listen to me. And, you know, he's in all sorts of problems. In the, he's in this, he's in that, he's in drugs. One of the reasons is that up until the age of 18, we let him go. Then they do something wrong. We say, by the way, we're Muslims. And they say, where did this come from? The problem is this, as the Imam Ghazali says, that this child was a blank sheet of paper. You could have written whatever you wanted on it. But you were too busy at work, and others have written all sorts on it. Now that the child is 18, you're asking him to obey the Sharia and develop the love of Nabi Akram Wasallam. It was incumbent upon you to instill that love into him. How do you do that? Sometimes we might struggle, but it's very simple. You can bring your child to the uh, Istamaz of Dawat Islami. Why can't you? You can take your child on as Madni Kafla. Why can't you? You can take your daughters to the sisters Istamaz of Dawat Islami. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, in most of the Western countries, there are hundreds of Istamaz where our Islamic sisters go, where the Islamic brothers go. Alhamdulillah, all separate, different days as well. And our daughters, when they see the beautiful Madni environment, they are mesmerized by it. It's just our failure. When our sons come to the Madni Kaflas, they love it. We've seen it. Young lads, we've had 30 to 40 on Madni Kaflas who love the masjid environment and they come back month after month. We need to change the environment that we're in. The month of Ramadan and Mubarak was all about change. It's not about new clothes on Eid day and everything else, no. Eid is a celebration, but it's celebrating freedom from the traps of the shaitan. All the wrong things that we were doing, we've given up in Ramzan. That is what you're celebrating. You're saying, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, you know, I thank you, Ya Allah, that you rid me of not only my sins by forgiving me, because we live in the hope and the mercy of Allah Azawajal. So Ya Allah, you've not only forgiven my sins, but Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, you've cleansed my mind and soul, and inshallah Azawajal, I'm going to obey you from now on. I'm going to control my nafs, I'm going to control my desires. I'm going to control what I say. I'm going to control what I see. I'm going to control what I hear. I'm going to control my hands and what I type. I'm going to control my feet so that I don't look at anything that is disobedient to you. I don't listen to anything that displeases you. I don't say anything that displeases you. I don't use my hands for anything that displeases you. I don't use my feet for anything that displeases you. But not only that, we go one step further. Not only am I going to stop the sins, but also I'm going to look at things that please you, Ya Allah. I'm going to look at the glorious Quran. I'm going to look at the beautiful Kaaba. I'm going to look at the beautiful Gumbad al Khazashif. Every morning when I get up, I'm going to look at the beautiful face of my parents. Ya Allah, I'm going to use these ears positively. I'm going to use these ears to listen to the glorious Quran. Ramzan's taught me that. I'm going to use these ears to listen 
to Nate Parks. I'm going to use these ears to listen to Bianat of Amida Sunnah and Madni Channel and Mubalik so that I can learn the deen of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm going to listen to audio booklets that I can do. I can learn the deen of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm going to use this tongue for the good. I'm going to be nice to people. I'm going to keep it moist in the zikr of Allah Azawajal. I'm not going to waste my time on social media sending filthy messages. I'm going to actually do the work of deen. I'm going to go to the Dawat al Islami social media sites and I'm going to share everything that's on there with all my friends so that the message of the deen of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu can be spread far and wide. And for every tweet that I do and every message that I share on there and people act upon the beautiful sunnahs of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I will get the reward. I'm going to share the Madni Mazakras with people. I'm going to share the Madni pool, the, the Madni flowers with people. I'm going to change my life so that every moment I'm doing the work of the deen of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what Ramzan was about. Ramzan was about changing your focus. It's been me, 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 me. When is it going to be that I'm going to live my life for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal? You know, all our lives, we build our own environment. Ask yourself this question. In the last year, for example, what have I done for the deen of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What have I done to please Allah Azza wa Jal? Ramzan, I tried. Now I'm outside Ramzan. Inshallah Azza wa Jal, I'm going to continue. Ramzan was here to beautify your soul. Your soul is shining on the day of Eid. It's not just about wearing new clothes. I've got my new clothes on. I'm looking good. No, your soul is shining as well. It's pure and clean now. It's come out of Ramadan. It's like you've been in a furnace. Don't let any impurities enter it. Keep it clean. Don't look at the wrong thing. Don't say the wrong thing. Keep that piety. Keep that connection with the Madani environment of Dawat Islami and you'll stay strong. Keep that connection with the pious people of Allah Azzawajal, and you'll stay strong. Keep watching Madani channel and you'll stay strong. Keep looking at the glorious Quran every day. Even if you recite just one ruku, you know, one part, one page, keep that connection with the Quran. Even if you recite Dhrudi Pak, say 313 times, just keep that connection. So long as you keep that connection, the heartbeat will carry on. And this love of Allah and his beloved Habib will flourish and will change your life. Salu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ramadan is the month of blessings and forgiveness. Ramadan is the month of blessings and forgiveness. Ramadan.